Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and it is time to do our October TBR. So if you happen to see my October TBR last year, you'll know that I had made um, specific slices, I guess we could call them, prompts um, for Halloween. So I am bringing some of those back this right. year. I am very excited to say and mixing some of those in with my regular prompts. So that being said, it's gonna be a really fun month. <laughs> First of all, let's go over what I did or did not read in September. So it is September 24th right now, and so I do still have about a week left to finish any books, but I wanted to get this filmed and ready to go. So we're just gonna go off of where I'm at right now. So the first prompt that I had for September was a Marmy pick, my mom, and between between 350 and 400 pages. And for that, she chose Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I have not read this one yet. I don't, I don't know if I'm in the mood for this one right now. I have been wanting to do romance and whatnot, but I just, I'm, I'm not gravitating towards this one right now and I'm not entirely sure why. So I have not picked this one up just yet. The next prompt that I had was set in a different country and for that one I chose Raiders of the Lost Heart by Joe Segura. This one is a treasure hunting romance set in Mexico and I did read this one. I gave it three and a half stars. I thought it was good, I thought it was fine, but it wasn't anything super memorable. It wasn't anything super amazing. I thought it was good while I read it, but I don't think it's gonna be one that I'm gonna think a whole lot about down the road. So I did enjoy it, I had a good time with it, but it's just one that was, you know, nothing absolutely amazing. It didn't like have me swooning for these characters or anything like that. So either way, I did read this one. The next prompt that I had was a booktuber favorite. And for that one, I chose Swift and Saddled, thanks to Sid from Sid Book Warum. She had this one as her best sequel that she's read this year. And I read this and I second that. I did read this one, I gave it five stars. I really, really enjoyed this. I loved seeing the progression of the house and their romance and just, all the aspects of this. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. It wasn't super over the top. It wasn't anything super crazy, but I did have a really good time with this and I'm really, really, really glad that I read it. The next book that we have is A to Z author surname. And for that one, I chose The Last Dreamwalker by Rita Woods. I did read this one. I don't have it with me because I did actually already send this one to my sister for her to read as well. I absolutely loved this book. I read it really quickly and I just, I thought it was a really, really great book and I'm so glad that I read that one as well. That one is kind of a gothic style book where a family, um, it's a girl and her two older brothers lose their mom and she finds out that there's something kind of going on. She's always had these dreams that were really realistic and she never really understood them and come to find out there's actually it's actually something that runs in the family her and her mom and a bunch of the women in her family are actually dream walkers they have the ability to enter other people's dreams and can manipulate them if they so choose it's following her perspective as she's learning about being a dream walker from her aunts down in South Carolina, as well as her ancestor, the first dream walker, who was actually a slave in the 1800s, and kind of what they went through and how they got to be where they are today. I thought it was a really, really incredible story, and I really loved the take on it. It had that gothic vibe and that just that southern style. I went back and forth between physical and audio for this book and I thought both were done fantastic and I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars and like I said I've already passed that one on to my sister for her to read as well because I think that she'd really like it too. So the next one that, that I have is a wild card and for that one I chose The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates. I am still excited to read this one but I have not started this one yet. Um, hopefully I can get to it at some point here in the next month or two or even at the end of this month 
but it just got away from me. The first two weekends of this month, my husband and I have spent bear hunting and so we were bear hunting and between bear hunting and baseball games during the week, it's been a, an insane month. So I've been reading consistently, but this just hasn't made it onto the docket yet. So hopefully I can pick this one up before the end of the month, but if not, I am gonna hopefully get to it soon. My next prompt was my most recent purchase slash three word title. And for that I chose Empire of Shadows by Jacqueline Benson. This one I have not read. Um, this one was described as Romancing the Stone Meets the Mummy, and it's another romance, um, historical treasure hunting romance. And I read like the prologue for this book, and I'm gonna have to reread it because I went right over my head. Everybody was up and moving it around, and it just, it went right over my head. So I'm gonna have to restart it. But I have not read this one yet, so there was, there's that. And because I got three word title for the third time, I also had to add in an extra spin. And for that one, I got highly anticipated. And for that, I read The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. I did read this one and I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars and I am pretty much pawning it off on everybody. I told my dad that he should read it. I told my husband that he should read it because it kind of reminded me of the Unwind series by Neil Shesterman that we love, that him and I both really love. And I actually got a copy of this to send down to my sister as well because I think she'll really enjoy it. Kind of that dystopian type of story. And it's really, really interesting. I really felt for these characters. I thought that was pretty surprising because you're following about eight different characters in this book and I felt for all of them I really cared about these characters some of them you love some of them you hate but either way you get to know them and you feel for them and you can relate to them and I just I really love this book I thought it was fantastic I thought it was beautifully written and she just she did a really really great job with this and that made it remind me of the Unwind series by Neil Shesterman is with that series, he takes something that is absolutely outlandish, that's crazy, and he makes it seem commonplace because that's what it is in this world, in this future. That's what it is, is it's commonplace. But at the same time, you you sit back and you think about it and you're like, there's no fucking way that they're doing this, you know? And this is kind of how I felt with this one, that it's like, it's so out there and crazy like where the hell did these strings come from and what's going on with it but looking into how people react it's like you know she really has a point and it's a really interesting thing to make you stop and think because once you really start thinking about it and talking about it it just really it really gets in your head and so i absolutely love this one i thought this book was fantastic and i gave it five stars the next book that i had was a hannah pick and for that one her and I read together The Witches of Bone Hill by Ava Morgan. I did read this. Her and I finished it within an hour, hour of each other and we both really, really loved it. I think she gave it five stars. I gave it like four and a half. Um, I had a hard time connecting with the characters at the beginning, but once things really started picking up, I absolutely loved it and it kind of gave me like Charmed vibes. I love Charmed and I've watched Charmed ever since I was little. And so it kind of gave me the vibes of that one because the girls in this book, they lose their mother and then they have to move into this big old house and come to find out that they actually are witches and have magic. And it's them having to kind of figure that out. So I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a really good time and I really enjoyed it a lot. And so yeah, I'm really glad I read this one as well. All right, and then last but not least, oh, technically I have two more. And then the next one I had was published in July. And for that one, I chose The Ornithologist Field Guide to Love by India Holton. I am currently read the, reading this one. I'm over 80 pages into it right now. And I'm enjoying the heck out of it. It has the same kind of crazy and fun, like, <clears throat> just, you have to jump in and go for the ride. Like, these ladies are crazy. And at the same time, they are very... Uh, intent on being proper. They they feel that they must uh, remain proper at all times, but at the same time they're ready to shoot somebody if they need to. So it's just it's so much fun and I'm having a really great time with it. 
and I'm excited to keep reading this one. Like I said, I'm a little over 80 pages into it right now, and it's just, it's a fun time. I'm having a really great time. I'm enjoying the way that the relationship is starting out between her and his name is Devin is the male character's name. And I'm excited to see where it goes and what kind of trouble that they can get into. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to finish this one, but I haven't yet. So I am taking that into account for my throws. And last but not least, I have my bonus book. And for that one, I had Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson because I did want to try to get to this, even though I didn't finish it in August. Like I said, it, it's been a crazy month. It didn't happen. I didn't pick up a chunky fantasy. Oh, well. Ne maybe next time. So overall, if you have been counting and paying attention as I've talked for far too long already, me, I have read five out of the nine books that I needed to read for September. And so that means that I did not complete it and I have four extra throws for this month, which I mean, I'm not super mad about because I'm excited to see what I'm gonna be picking up for the next month, but at the same time, it's a lot of throws, especially since we're getting up there with the uh, third time for the same prompt. So it's definitely, definitely interesting. So without further ado, let's get into the throws and what I will be reading for October with my four extra spins, or throws, four extra throws. <laughs> Okay, so for my first throw, I got a witchy book, and for that one, I have decided because my sister and I are rereading the Harry Potter series and annotating it to give to my dad for him to read for the first time. So I am currently rereading that series and enjoying the hell out of it. So for that one, I did decide to go with the next book in the series, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, because my dad finished the third book over the weekend, and I haven't even started this yet. So I will be putting in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire for a witchy book. If you don't know what this is about, then I think you're hiding under a rock, to be completely honest with you. But Goblet of Fire, this is where the Triwizard Tournament comes to Hogwarts and things happen and it's just, it's a fun time. Like I said, this is um, a reread for me. I absolutely love these books and it's been really, really fun annotating them for my dad to look at later. And, or to read them after my sister and I do. She is reading the fifth book right now and I'm on the fourth one and my dad just finished the third one. So I'm gonna be putting this in for my witchy book. The next prompt that I got was a skull on the cover. And for that one, I decided to go with a library book, and that is The Luminaries. This is by Susan Dennard. This is actually a YA book. I don't usually read YA very much anymore, if you don't know. But this one sounds really, really interesting to me. Um, it says that Winnie Wednesday wants nothing more than to join the Luminaries. It's an ancient order that protects Winnie's town and the rest of humanity from monsters and nightmares that rise in the forest of Hemlock Falls every night. But something happens and she basically has to go to her ex-best friend to try and help her with figuring out what's going on. And I don't know, it just sounds really interesting. I don't know much about it, but I absolutely love this cover. I think it's gorgeous. And I'm really excited to read it and it's not very long. So this is what I'm gonna be going with for Skull on the cover. next prompt that I got is a thriller and for that one I decided to try and kind of finish out reading some Riley Sager books and so I will be reading Survive the Night by Riley Sager. This one I think is one of his more controversial books. Um, some people really 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 hate it and some people really like it but I haven't read this one yet. This one and The Last Time I Lied are the only two that I have yet to read by him. I've read all of his other books and have really loved some of them and then not really liked others. So I am going to be reading this one. Um, this one... It says, it's November 1991, Nirvana's in the tape deck, George H.W. Bush is in the White House, and movie-obsessed college student Charlie Jordan is in a car with a man who might be a serial killer. So, okay. <clears throat> I don't know what to expect from this book. 
and I'm nervous about it because I heard somebody, I want to say it was Books and Lala, but don't quote me on that. But I did hear somebody say that it shouldn't be called Survive, it shouldn't be Survive the Night, it should be Survive this book. So that makes me really nervous to read it, but I still want to try it and see how I like it because everybody looks at books differently. So this is what I will be choosing for my thriller. <laughs> prompt that I got was a cozy fall book and for that one I'm gonna go with one that my sister actually just sent me so she's probably going to read it with me and that is The Haunting of Aveline Jones this is by Phil Hicks it is a middle grade and it says turn on your torch torches and join Aveline Jones Aveline Jones loves or Aveline loves reading ghost stories so a dreary half term becomes much more exciting when she discovers a spooky old book not only are the stories fine tingling but it belonged to a girl called Primrose Penberthy who vanished mysteriously never to be seen again intrigued Aveline decides to investigate Primrose's disappearance with some help from her new friend Harold now some wonder something is stirring and it is looking for Aveline so this sounds really really fun and it's gonna be good so it is a middle grade which is why I'm counting this for cozy so it is super short and I'm just really excited to read it I, I haven't read I don't usually go for middle grade but I think it'll be a lot of fun <laughs> So I apologize if there was an angle change. I changed my battery before it died in the middle of a sentence. Okay, so the next prompt that I got is Gothic Vibes. And for that one, I have decided to go with The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Takshi. I don't remember a whole lot about this book. It's basically, I think that she gets married and the circumstances with that is that like her husband can never ask about her past or something like that. But I've heard uh i heard really good things about this when it first came out and i've definitely heard that it has those gothic vibes so i'm really excited to try it i got this last year and i still have to pick it up so i'm going to be reading this one for my gothic vibes it's also not super long so i'm kind of that's kind of the trend here um is not super super long books <laughs> Last but not least, for my initial six throws, I got a spooky vacation. And that one basically means that it is a book set in another country, basically. A Halloween type book or whatever that's set in a different country. And that one I'm kind of stretching things a little bit because I'm gonna be going with a romance. I'm gonna be going with Morbidly Yours by Ivy Fairbanks. This is a romance that is set in yeah. Ireland. Okay, it says he has to marry by his 35th birthday. She's sworn off love. Painfully shy, Callum Flannelly would rather dive into an open grave than take a stranger to dinner, no. but he can only inherit the family undertaking business no. under one condition. He must marry before his 35th birthday. Texan animator Lark Thompson moved to Galway, Ireland to restart, restart her life and career, not to be, not be reminded of losing her husband by moving in next to a funeral home. But when she learns of Callum's dilemma, Lark's certain she can help him find the one, even if she's sworn off love herself. Though as the perfect, or though as the dating project progresses and Lark spends more time with straight-laced, sarcastic Callum, he starts to crack the ice around her grieving heart. And the more joy that vivacious Lark brings to Callum's gray existence, the less she can imagine letting her return to Texas. If they think they can ignore their connection, they're dead wrong. So this one sounds like it's going to be really cute. It's set in Ireland, has it to deal with an undertaking business that is family run. And so it doesn't really have like spooky vibes, but it still has like a vacation vibe because it's in Ireland and it's a different country from obviously where I'm at in Colorado. So I am stretching things a little bit, but I really want to read this one and I think this will be the perfect time to do it and kind of break things up from my other books on my TBR so that I'm going to be going with Morbidly Yours. Okay, so now we get into my four bonus throws. And if you've been paying attention, I'm already going to have a plus one because for a thriller, that is the third time that I've gotten thriller. So I'm already going to have one plus one for my throws. Okay, 
so the next prompt that I got for one of my add-ons as a punishment was a five-star prediction. And for that, I have my miniature book of monsters that my sister made for me. And so we will choose a book out of here. I tried to add in a few newer updates, but I know that I'm missing some, so we'll just see what we get here. Let's go with this one. And that one is Sunbringer by Hannah Kaner. Okay, let me grab that. Okay, so we have Sunbringer by Hannah Kaner. This is the second book to God Killer. And I read that one, I don't even remember when now. It was a while back now, but I really, really enjoyed it. I gave it like four and a half stars and I immediately picked this one up. I started this one, I think I made it like, I don't know, 60 or so pages into it and I was enjoying it but I put it down and I never picked it back up again so here we are and so I will be reading Sunbringer for a five-star prediction <laughs> Here we are with the box. And let's go with this one. Okay. Oh my god. And we got Book Lovers by Emily Henry. So, all right, here we are. I guess this is going back onto the TBR for October. I guess the punishment for not finishing this one in September is to get a five-star prediction and have to read it in October. So, okay, here we are. Okay, and having those two five-star predictions means that is the third time that I've gotten that prompt, so we will be adding in two extra throws now. So that puts us up at 12 books. And so this is fun. <laughs> Next throw got me set in a different country and a haunted setting. It landed right in the middle of these ones. And so I thought this was a really, really fun prompt or combination of prompts to get. And for that one, I decided to go with Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Now, I don't know for sure if this book is going to have a haunted setting, but it makes it sound that way in the synopsis. So I'm going with it. It says, from the author of Gods of Jade and Shadow comes a reimagining of the classic gothic horror novel, a story about an isolated mansion in 1950s Mexico and the brave socialite drawn to its treacherous secrets. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin, Noemi Taboda heads to High Place, a distant house in the Mexican countryside. Noemi is an unlikely rescuer. She's a glamorous debutante more suited for cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing, but she's also tough, smart, and not afraid. Not of her cousin's new English husband, a stranger who is both menacing and alluring, not of his father, the ancient patriarch who seems fascinated by Noemi, and not even of the house itself, which begins to invade Noemi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Noemi's only ally is this in, in this inhospitable place is the family's youngest son, but he too may be hiding a dark secret. As Noemi begins to unearth stories of violence and madness, she is slowly drawn into a terrifying yet seductive world, a world that may be impossible to escape. So I don't know if the house is haunted, but it does seem like there's going to be something going on with the house, like secrets. In one of the reviews, it says, While the book draws inspiration from gothic classics like Rebecca and Jane Eyre, there is a spunky female protagonist and an ancient house filled with disturbing secrets. So it sounds like it's going to have kind of that haunted style of setting, if not specifically like ghosts for a haunted setting. So this is the book I am going to be picking irregardless for... Uh, a haunted setting and set in a different country because it does take place in Mexico. So there we go. I'm finally going to read Mexican Gothic. And also set in a different country is going to add on another throw. So we're up to 13 now. 13 throws. Like I said, this is just a grand old time. Grand old time. <laughs> prompt that I got is start a new series and for that one I'm gonna go with another one with spooky vibes 
And I'm going to go with Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. This is the first book in the Silence the Lambs series, the Hannibal Lecter series, whatever it, you want to call it. Either way, Silence of the Lambs is like one of my favorite movies of all time. I absolutely love that movie. Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster just play their parts impeccably in that movie. And I absolutely love it. So we all know that I will be watching Silence of the Lambs this month because my husband can't say no. He doesn't have an excuse. It's October. So I'm going to try and read Red Dragon. I have read one other book by Thomas Harris. I read Carrie Mora at the end of last year and I hated it so much and gave it one star and so i'm very nervous to try this but i like i said i absolutely love silence of the lambs and i love hannibal lecter's character so i'm very excited to try red dragon and i wanted to get to this last year and i never did so i will be doing red dragon for start a new series to keep with the the, the uh, october vibes okay and now we go into the extra throws that i have to do because of doubling up on uh getting a prompt for the third time So the next prompt that I got is a library recommendation. And I, when, I, when I looked back through the emails, I did remember there was one recommendation that I got that is A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking by T. Kingfisher. So I put that one on my request from the library and hopefully it'll be here soon. I will put a picture up here if you don't know. I've been hearing a lot about this one here lately where people have been reading it and it's basically, it's a YA book, but this girl, her magic is basically in the kitchen. She has magical powers when it comes to baking and breads and whatnot and I don't remember a whole lot else about that book but I'm really excited to try it and I think it's going to be really cute and a fun one to add on to this TBR with trying to have the kind of cozy spooky fun October vibes so that is going to be my library recommendation book <laughs> add-on prompt I got is a historical fiction and I'm going to stick with my theme and I found the book of thorns by Hester Fox is technically a magical realism historical fiction type book this says penniless and stranded in France after a bid to escape her cruel uncle goes awry Cornelia Shaw is far from the Parisian life of leisure she imagined desperate and lacking options she allows herself to be recruited into Napoleon's grand army as a naturalist her near magical ability to heal any wound with herbal mixtures invites awe among the soldiers and suspicion from behind Cornelia's vast knowledge of the natural world is a secret she keeps hidden. The flowers speak to her through a mysterious connection she has felt since childhood, one that her mother taught her to heat before she disappeared. Then as Napoleon's army descends on Waterloo, the flowers sing to her in a startling revelation. A girl who bears the striking resemblance to Cornelia, a girl she almost remembers, her sister, lost long ago, who seems to share the same gifts, determined to reunite with Elizabeth, Despite being on opposite sides of the war, Cornelia is drawn into a whirlwind of betrayal, secrets, and lies, brought together by fate and magic at the peak of the war. The sisters try to uncover the key to the source of the power that links them as accusations of witchcraft and swirl and threaten to destroy the very lives they fought for. So this book sounds really, really good. This is another one that my husband got me for my birthday, and I'm really excited to pick it up. I don't know exactly what years this is set in, but it does say the Napoleon's Grand Army, so obviously it's going to be a while ago. It is historical, and it is a magical realism fiction-esque type of book. So I didn't want to read like World War II historical fiction, and I wanted something fun and kind of with what I was in the mood for, and so I'm going to be going with The Book of Thorns by Hester Fox. <laughs> was vampires and so I wasn't really sure what to choose for this one but I've decided to go with I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. Matheson. Technically I Am Legend is only like 120 pages and the rest of this book is filled up with other short stories by him. I did not realize originally when I got this that I Am Legend is not zombies 
that are diseased. It is actually a vampire book that was written in the 50s, I believe. And so I didn't know that. I've watched the movie with Will Smith so many times. Love that movie so much. But I never realized that they were vampires. They always seem more like zombies to me. But this says that Robert Neville is the last living man on earth, but he is not alone. Every other man, woman, and child on earth has become a vampire, and they are all hungry for Neville's blood. By day, he is the hunter, stalking the sleeping undead through the abandoned ruins of civilization. By night, he barricades himself in his home and prays for the dawn. How long can one man survive in a world of vampires? So this is a vampire book. I never knew that. And my husband read at least I Am Legend in this, and he wasn't super fond of it, but it's like written, like I said, in like the 50s. And he never read the rest of the story. So I am going to try and read the book in its entirety. I want to read I Am Legend as well as the other stories. And I don't usually go for short story collections or novellas for that matter, but I am going to try this one for my vampire book. <laughs> And last but not least, we are finally at the end after this chaotic, crazy mess of 14 books on my TBR. Holy crap. Okay, so the last but not least, I got a new author. And for this one, I'm going to choose another book that my sister sent to me in the box for fall. And that is The Spellbook of Katrina Van Tassel. This is by Alyssa Palombo. I am so excited to read this book. I've seen this book pop up all over the place this year and every time it catches my eye I absolutely love Sleepy Hollow with Johnny Depp and Christina Ritchie. Absolutely love that movie. That's another movie that I want to be watching here pretty soon. And so this one caught my eye. This one is blurbed by Greer McAllister who wrote Arctic Fury, she wrote The Magician's Lie, she wrote Girls in the Skies, all of those I've read and really, really enjoyed. Uh, Woman 99, I, I really like her books and she blurbed this one, so that is hopefully a good sign. And it says, when an iterant schoolmaster Ichabod Crane arrives in the spooky village of Sleepy Hollow, Katrina Van Tassel finds herself instantly drawn to him despite her family's wishes. Brought together by their mutual love of books and music, Ichabod and Katrina embark, embark on a secret love affair, sneaking away into the woods after dark, all while praying they do not catch sight of Sleepy Hollow's legendary headless horseman. That is until All Hallows' Eve, when Ichabod suddenly disappears, leaving Katrina alone and in a perilous position. Enlisting the help of her friend and rumored witch, Charlotte Jansen, Katrina seeks the truth of Ichabod Crane's disappearance, investigating the forest around Sleepy Hollow using unconventional, often darkly magical means. What they find forces Katrina to question everything she once knew and to wonder if the Headless Horseman is perhaps more than just a story after all. So this book sounds really, really good and hopefully I'll be able to read it with my sister. It is a little bit longer. It's not a metal grade or anything like that, but this one I'm super excited for and it definitely has the October vibes. So I will be reading this one for a new author. Okay, now... Okay, so these are all of the books that I will be attempting to read in October, plus A wi uh, Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking by T. King Fisher. And I have no idea if I'm going to be able to do it. I think it's definitely going to help that some of these are young adult or middle grade, and I am really excited for all of them, but we'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes. And so yeah, have you read any of these books? What have you enjoyed? What do you think I will be able to finish in the month of October? Hopefully, hopefully I will be able to get a lot of reading done as baseball will be ending here in a few weeks. And I'm just really, really excited for all these vibes. I have some romance, I have some fantasy, I have some horror, I have some thrillers, I have just a little bit of everything and I really, really enjoy reading all those kinds of books. So if you liked this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, comment down below. If you want to check out any of my other, any of my other TBR videos, I will have the playlist linked down below. Um, I also have my Amazon wish list and my Instagram linked down below. I don't post to Instagram very often, I am working on trying to get better about that, but it's just a, a matter of priorities, really, when it comes down to it. What should I prioritize this month? And are there any that you think maybe I will or won't like more than the others? So please leave your comments down below, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.